Hey, good morning. This is Pastor Steve Mapp, and I am so delighted that you've taken some time this morning to, to be with us uh, for our devotional on this Friday, September the 17th. It's always a joy to have you with us. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, most who know me know that I am a strong, strong advocate, uh, proponent of small group ministry. I believe that that discipleship really happens uh, best in small group Bible study, where where folks gather together and 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 share scripture and share life and its application, uh, the application of scripture into our lives, and how we can continue to support, encourage, and serve one another. Uh, small group ministry is is such a wonderful way to grow spiritually and. And if you're not in a small group, I would highly encourage you to find one and uh, and, and be a part of, of, of this spiritual growth opportunity that small group presents. On Monday mornings, I share small group with uh, about seven other uh, men uh, early on Monday morning every week. Been doing so for, I guess now, about 35 years. This past Monday, we, uh, we've been studying the book of Exodus and uh, we we hit chapter 12 uh, this past Monday, and chapter 12 of Exodus describes in great detail uh, the Passover event uh, where God instructs Moses uh, uh, on this meal that the Israelites are to prepare and, and be ready to eat in haste and, and be ready to move quickly because he has promised uh, the last plague being uh, the smiting of the firstborn of the Egyptians, of course, causing the Pharaoh, causing the Pharaoh of Egypt to to send Moses and the Israelites away. In chapter twelve, uh, gosh, the first part of it, it it goes into this uh, really uh, great detail about the meal, the Passover meal that that the Israelites are to take uh, uh, a one year old male lamb from uh, sheep or goat. Uh, but it must be one year old and, and unblemished. Um, and they're supposed to, of course, slaughter this uh, lamb and roast it and eat it fully, along with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. And the first part of the chapter even goes on to describe how they're supposed to do this. They're supposed to be prepared with their, with, with, uh, uh, their loins girded, ready to run, uh, sandals on their feet, staff in their hand, uh, to be ready for this quick exodus, if you will. But it's a fascinating chapter in this regard as well. Uh, a little later on in the chapter, I'd like to share with you um, how God instructs Moses on something that's hugely important for all of us uh, in verses 14 and following, chapter 12. Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, you are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, but on the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses, for whoever eats anything leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. And on the first day you shall have a holy assembly, and another holy assembly on the seventh day. No work at all shall be done on them, except what must be eaten by every person that alone may be prepared by you. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on this very day I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a permanent ordinance. And just a little later on in the chapter, uh, verses 24 through 27, God instructs Moses this way, and you shall observe this event as an ordinance for you and your children forever. And it will come about when you enter the land which the Lord will give you as he has promised, that you shall observe this right. And it will come about when your children will say to you, What does this right mean to you? You shall say, It is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of of the sons of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and spared our homes. And the people bowed low and worshiped." Wow, think about this for a moment. 
um, even before the first of the Ten Commandments was given to Moses, before any commandments were given, he instructed the Israelite people to celebrate this rite, this meal, if you will, the seven-day feast, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where they're they were to eat no bread that was leavened and not even have leaven in their homes. Very specifically, uh, just as it's just as the Passover meal um, with the sacrificial lamb and the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. God was establishing right away before the nation even formed itself, if you will, uh, that this rite, this remembrance needed to be kept holy for generations upon generations upon generations. It's fascinating to me that, uh, that what God wanted most and first was for his people to remember, remember uh, that they had been enslaved and remember that it was God who had lifted them out of that slavery um, and given them uh, the promise of new land and, and new life. And uh, this past Monday, uh, when we talked about this in our small group, we we focus some attention on the fact that there are traditions, unfortunately, that we don't keep, um, that over the years uh, get watered down or, or even dismissed, and how important it is uh, in, within our Christian faith to hold fast to the traditions that, uh, that really define who we are and what we are and what we believe. And I worry sometimes that maybe we we might uh, we might forget some of the traditions. It's important that we don't. And speaking to that, this particular Sunday at Winfrey, I am so delighted that we are going to celebrate communion. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper, and as we know, of course, this was the the supper that He shared with His disciples on the night in which He was betrayed, where He took bread and and broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. And of course, sharing the cup of wine, this is the blood of the new covenant, he said, take and drink. You know, um, I am so delighted that we continue to celebrate communion at Winfrey, as do all denominations, I believe, in the Christian world. When I was a little boy and growing uh, in my uh, Baptist tradition, and, and certainly in uh, in each of the traditions, I used to love Communion Sunday. It was the first Sunday of the month. Uh, I look forward to those sermons. I look forward to sharing uh, the Communion meal. Uh, once I had been baptized, it was a it was a special time for me, and I remember it so fondly. And perhaps you do as well. And I'm so glad that we have kept that tradition and that we'll celebrate it again this Sunday uh, as we do throughout the year at Winfrey. I know David, Dr. Benjamin has uh, some, some wonderful words prepared for us uh, in this celebration. I think you'll gain a lot from it, I hope. I do hope that you'll join us this week uh, at Winfrey for our Sunday service and celebrate communion with us. And as we close our time together today, I I ask you, as I ask myself, to examine the traditions uh, that I have had over my life um, uh, in my Christian faith and, and how important those traditions are that I maintain them, that I keep them holy, uh, and that I share them with uh, my sons and grandchildren and, uh, and, our, and my family. Um, to carry these on, it's just so, so important. And I'd ask you to think about maybe some of those in in your homes as well. But this Sunday, join us for communion at Winfrey, won't you? You'll find a, a, a lot of meaning uh, in doing so. May God bless you. Have a great day. Be safe. I'll see you again soon.